This is the Collecting Real Estate Podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Purse, here with your co-host, Bill Hamill. I'm so much more comfortable collecting real estate than I am collecting other stuff. All right, Bill, what property are we talking about today? Today we're talking about an auction purchase on Central Avenue in Albany, New York. Um, it was called Citadel Square. And you said this was another auction purchase? Yeah, this was an auction. It wasn't a, a county courthouse auction. It was more of a auction done by a local auctioneer. Um, private auctioneers sometimes are contacted by property sellers if, uh, you know, they may have difficulty selling a property on the market or whatever reasons they may want to do, you know, a quick sale just to get something liquidated. So uh, this was a property where it was on my thoroughfare from probably the restaurant that I worked at at the time located in Colony and the portfolio that we started accumulating in the Pine Hills neighborhood of Albany, this property was in between those two locations. So it was a major thoroughfare that I normally traveled. And one day I see this really big auction sign and uh, it's probably put up, uh, you know, two weeks before the auction actually happened. So, you know, I had planned to at least uh, go to the auction just to see what would happen and uh, be part of that excitement. Do you think having just completed the auction process, you saw that sign and felt a little more comfortable trying to do another one? Probably. It, it, it caught my eye just because I had just educated myself of the value of buying auction properties. Not to say that every auction property is a good deal, you know, you still have to analyze the deal just like just like every deal. But, you know, the, the auction sign caught my eye saying, oh, there might be some potential here. Auctions are thins out the market. So a lot of people who are interested in real estate, you know, maybe looking at what we would consider arm length transactions where, you know, you just go to the multiple listing service and, and uh you know, you go through those normal safe routes of buying a property where as soon as uh, auction properties come about, that will thin out the competition a little bit. A lot of people, uh, you know, are a little weary of auctions. It's, 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 it's not as conservative. You know, there's more risk involved. The terms of sale are going to be more stringent where you know, you're not going to have opportunities for thorough inspections, thorough due diligence. You know, you have to come up with the money quickly. You know, you got to close, uh, you know, close within a, a, you know, period of time. In this case, you know, uh, it was a 30 day close from, from uh, you know, whoever uh, won at this auction. So when you're driving by and you saw this sign that caught your attention, what was the next step? Was there a phone number on there that you called? No, um, there probably was a phone number. Um, I, I didn't think I was a player for this for this deal. So um, I just I just noted that the auction was happening on whatever day, whatever time. Um, it's funny that that was December 4th, um, which I do remember. It was probably 10 a.m., 11 a.m., something like that. But um, I had just planned on attending, you know, and, and most likely, you know, just being on the front lawn and seeing what would happen. Mm -hmm. What kind of property was this? Another single family, two family? This was a commercial property right on Central Avenue. It was uh, an old church property. So it had uh, the, the church, which had recently been converted into office. And then it had the rectory building, which was um, second floor apartments and the first floor was a small office and there was a third building which uh, was originally a two-car garage which had been 
um, transformed into, a, at the time, it was kind of a half-ass, you know, a, a barbecue um, establishment that, that basically was running, in, you know, an, an illegal food business out of that, out of that building. Mm -hmm. So you showed up pretty much just window shop and, and see what happens. How did you end up winning this thing? Well, there wasn't a lot of interest. So that that's the beauty of some auctions where, you know, like I was saying, the competition is thinned out quite a bit because I think a lot of, you know, conventional uh, people will be just not even interested in an auction. It's just something that, uh, you know, doesn't fit their appetite. But for me at this point, you know, I was very attracted to auctions because uh, for the right auction, you can get a good deal. And there wasn't a lot of activity there. So, you know, I'm, I'm uh, standing around an auctioneer, you know, probably 10, 12 other people, you know, hanging around. We were able to uh, do a, a quick tour of the property, you know, 10, 20 minute walk through. And next thing you know, everyone circled around, listened to the terms of sale from the auctioneer. And, uh, you know, he started that auction. Were you hesitant to change into the commercial space? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I didn't know, uh, you know, I wasn't planning on bidding on this property. So, you know, I was, I was uh, buying residential rentals at the time. I think, uh, you know, the largest property we had bought was a two family. So, you know, we're, we're, we're here at this uh, auction. It was like a, a one acre lot on a corner three big buildings, actually two big buildings, one smaller. And, uh, you know, this was nothing that I had even ever analyzed or even thought of purchasing up to this point. Did you go there with your partner, Greg, or did you call him later and say, Hey, I bought a new building. It's a commercial commercial space. That was exactly it. You know, I, <laughs> I called uh, both my uh, partners at the time because, uh, Mike had just gotten involved in, uh, uh, property number four, that 229 Broadway, where, you know, he was a partner on that small single family, and then we bought him out shortly after. But um, on this particular transaction, you know, I won that bid. And, you know, I had a couple frantic phone calls to Greg and one to Mike saying, I just bought this property. And, uh, you know, it's a great deal and uh hopefully uh you know they would be interested because i now had uh limited time to get this thing closed that's great full speed ahead how did you prepare to manage a property that was in a different field than you would had experience in, in the past well it was vacant so um there really wasn't much to manage other than get in there do some improvements, some value add, some construction work, so we could get it leased up. So, you know, the original challenge was just getting it closed, which we were able to do. And then I was, uh, you know, off to work. So this is now my focal point, where for the next five or six months, this is where I was spending my days doing rehab work, construction work, getting this improved so um a commercial real estate broker could lease it out so it was outside of my element you know to even be able to know the beginning of leasing you know large amounts of square footage um to an office style tenant so we hired a local commercial leasing agent and, um, you know, they put it on the commercial market and, uh, and you wait. How long did it take for it to get fully rented? Um, I ended up renting, you know, the front building to a, a small tenant on the first floor. And other than that, we didn't have any luck at all leasing it. So that commercial agent had some people walking through you know, not a whole lot, you know, we had a one year contract with this gentleman. And, um, you know, he, he brought some interest, but, you know, very lukewarm. And uh, uh, we got the property improved, but um, we were never able to successfully rent that 
6,000 square foot church. So were you not cash flowing on it? Not really. Um, no, not at all. So we, we had a, a loan with a commercial bank. We had money invested in the deal. And uh, at that point, we were just value add investing into the deal. And uh, um, I, would, I would make those weekly calls to this commercial leasing agent, which I'm, I'm sure I turned into a major pain in the ass because I would call him every Friday, uh, you know, wondering what the progress was with finding a tenant. So that was my first experience with this type of space, realizing, uh, boy, do you have to have a, a degree of patience to be a commercial property owner and wait for a commercial tenant? Because it, it can take quite a while to get, you know, uh, get at least up much different than renting apartments. So what'd you end up doing? You just waited it out and I waited it out. In, in the meantime, you know, I saw what was being done to lease the space. You know, I was already uh, a real estate broker myself, um, geared towards residential. And at that point, I joined the commercial real estate board locally, because I had just bought this commercial property. So I joined the board, you know, witnessed what he was doing along the way. And and just waiting. So once it got close to our contract expiring and with this commercial broker, you know, I, I, I knew that uh, I was going to take over that listing, whether attempting to lease it or potentially just uh, sell the property. Mm -hmm. Taking a step back here, how did you fund it? We funded it through a local bank. Originally, uh, once we were successful at the auction, um, I was quick to start calling banks, figuring out that these banks were not very excited about lending on vacant space specifically. Well, not specifically. They don't, they don't like vacant space anyway on conventional commercial mortgages. But, um, you know, take it a step further, this was an old church property that was converted into offices. So, you know, no matter how you slice it and, you know, you're standing on the front lawn, you're still looking at a church. Um, it's just that the inside, the, the, it was converted very nicely into first floor office, second floor office. But um, we found quickly that the, the banks were very reluctant. So, you know, the scramble was on to get this financing. And fortunately we did get a local bank that, uh, you know, took a chance on us and this property. They lent to us very conservatively and uh, we were able to uh, get into the deal, fortunately. Our office right now is on Central Ave, the same road. Is it pretty close? It's probably two miles down the road. So, you know, the, I guess the frame of reference is Interstate 87. You know, if you come in to Colony, you know, near the Albany Airport, um, exit two, you either go to East or to W. Okay. So our office now, I'm heading West about a mile to get to our new office. And for this property, you know, we were headed East. So I would go about a mile the other direction and then we would get to this place so you know probably two two and a half miles apart okay driving directions great radio um <laughs> how did this end up working out did it all work out in the end yeah it worked out great i i took that listing back i just marketed it for lease so if i was lucky enough to have someone interested in, in leasing the space that that was the original intent because I, I was buy and hold. So if we could get this leased up and portfolio and move on to the next one that that would be optimal. Um, but I also, you know, my patience level for leasing it was growing thin. So I also put it up for sale. And probably within two weeks of me taking over this listing, having it for sale, um, we had someone who came in from Ireland and, um, you know, my, my attorney at the time, who was, this was uh, 
I've had this attorney for 20 years and this is how I, I was able to develop a relationship with him because he represented the buyer on this deal. And we both remember back, you know, when I, when I sold this deal and he was representing the gentleman from Ireland, he, to this day, he calls him my, my leprechaun coming in from Ireland to buy this, <laughs> buy this property. How long after you purchased it, were you able to sell it? So I had that one year contract with that commercial broker. So when that contract ran out, you know, uh, two or three weeks later, I had a contract with contract with this gentleman to purchase it. So um, we were under contract a little over a year after I bought this property and, uh, you know, deal probably took uh, two or three months to close. So, you know, probably 15, 16 months, this property was flipped. Was there anything in particular that this property taught you that has stuck with you? Yeah, it's just, uh, you know, the, the commercial game, you know, I, I had no idea about it. So um, understanding, you know, commercial lending, you know, what uh, banks appetites are as far as um, their comfort zone lending on commercial properties. And also realizing that commercial tenants are, it's much different game than residential apartments. You know, it just takes uh, much more patience to, um, you know, get it rented up. The upside for commercial property owners with, with these types of tenants is it might take a little while to find a tenant, but Traditionally, usually you're you're getting a tenant to sign a three year, five year, 10 year, you know, type lease. So, you know, the wait ends up being worthwhile, you know, because you get a, lo a very long term tenant that, you know, pretty much uh, handles the property um, much more responsibly or, you know, they're more responsible for items in their space than a, than a, you know, a, a tenant would be in an apartment. Mm -hmm. If I remember correctly, this is the first property that you had sold. Did you get a taste of that sale and start looking at your other properties thinking, Hmm, what could I get for this one on market? No, it was still all about building that portfolio. So when we ended up flipping this property, it, it ended up just being, okay, we just made some money. And the whole lot, you know, what we ended up doing was, you know, using uh, a lot of that cash that we had just made, you know, to parlay into our next, um, you know, deals that we had been purchasing, you know, so um you know now we're in the search for our original style properties you know two families in the pine hills neighborhood of albany and we were able to use you know uh, a lot of those proceeds to uh, get into our next deals mm -hmm. is there anything you would do differently now with an extra 20 years of wisdom and experience yeah it's um at, at this point this was the first deal that I was able to flip and come into a windfall of cash. So I had never seen this type of money. And on this deal, um, you know, I was 50% owner. My other two partners, you know, split a 50% share. So they were 25% a piece. And then when, when this was flipped, we, we basically doubled our money. And uh, I was able to get half of that. So here I am with uh, a six figure type paycheck. You know, so the, my big regret at the time was running out and buying a luxury car. Um, you know, looking back, you know, the, you know, I wouldn't do that. You know, I, I, you know, it's, it's, it's all about reinvesting the money into the next deals instead of running out and, and uh, buying high ticket consumer items. Yeah, but at that age, it's, it's nice to enjoy it sometimes as well. You better believe it. I, geez, I was running around with cash. Um, you know, I bought that car, I bought a few other frivol frivolous items. Um, you know, I, I felt like I had made it. That's a good story. It really was your leprechaun from from Ireland. Sure was. Anything else you want to add? 
No, that was, uh, you know, that's, that's the highlights of that, that property. We, we moved on from there and, and, uh, you know, I continue to drive down Central Avenue pretty regularly. It's, uh, you know, small area. And, uh, you know, I, I sit there. Oh, one other thing I, I add to that, that the one nice lead that that commercial broker did bring, and it's another learning experience on commercial property, was this property was right on a corner. And there was a traffic light at this corner, which I found was very appealing to, you know, um, uh, companies that are looking to redevelop or have their businesses at a particular spot. Um, meaning, or for example, this commercial broker brought a core, a big corner store gas station player um, to the table, which, you know, you'll be familiar with, um, with Stewart's. And, you know, they were interested in this property, um, for their business to put a gas station in and a corner store. But the, the main reason they were interested in this property was it had the traffic light with a turn light. So anybody who came to this light and if they had their, their operation there, you could easily just have easy access into this property. And that's a key component for, for commercial retail, um, that style business. So that was another learning curve of seeing what commercial property owners, specifically corner store gas station type company you know, was, was really looking for, um, yeah. unfor unfortunately, um, you know, they wanted to get the property under contract and, um, hold it, you know, basically have rights to the property until they got all their approvals from municipality to, to do what they wanted to do. And, um, you know, they weren't willing to put up a lot of hard money to do it. You know, we would be taking all the risk while they were getting their approvals, you know, to do this. So if they weren't able to get their approvals, we just wasted six months waiting for them to do their thing. So we chose not to uh, take that risk. And, um, you know, we didn't make that deal with Stuart's. And uh, shortly after, uh, you know, we were able to do it the way that I described few good points in there that traffic is so important for commercial real estate for someone who doesn't have the experience and they're just starting looking at properties yeah that was a big education on commercial commercial real estate uh going from zero knowledge to um eh, a taste of knowledge there's 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 a, a lot of moving parts from different type of commercial transactions different commercial mm -hmm. properties never too many stewards out there we don't have wawa but we have stewards we have Stewart since, since then, Jesus was 20 years ago and Stewart's was a big player back then. They were growing pretty wildly and, uh, oh my goodness, you, we, we've watched them since they're, geez, they're seem to like, seem like they're every, every two miles. There's a, there's another Stewart's. I definitely miss those in Tampa. All right. Well, I appreciate you sharing bill. All right. Thanks, Steven. Thanks.